In today's video, I answer what is causing my dog's bladder stones. This wee dog, they had a bladder full of stones removed, they were put on a specific diet, they changed to spring water, but the same problem recurred, you know, very quickly a year later. Um, and the vet said that they'd never seen a recurrence so fast and the dog needed a second emergency surgery. Um, and the question really is, you know, what is the cause of this? So we need to break this down. So there are four main types of bladder stones and each of those has a different cause. So without knowing which stone it is, it's very difficult or impossible to, to give an exact cause. And actually this dog stones uh, have been sent off for analysis. They do take some time to come back, um, you know, depending on where you are in the world, it can take um, a few months in some cases, but that really is the first thing that we need to do. Now, the most common stone is something called struvite, and that's generally due to an underlying bacterial infection that changes the urine's pH, so the acidity, and making it become an alkaline. It can also be caused by some drugs or diets, and it can also form when there's a very concentrated urine as well, because what can happen is we can get a high salt um, urine content but when it's very concentrated these salts all precipitate out and they form like a sludge or a sand and that can then form bigger larger stones. Now apart from struvite our next most common is something called calcium oxalate um, and actually these are increasing increasing in frequency so as we're better able to manage and better able to prevent struvite stones in the first place we're seeing less of those and an increased percentage incidence of calcium oxalate stones and actually the cause of these is poorly understood. They form an acidic urine so unlike struvite which are alkaline they form an acidic urine and they seem to form in pets that are being fed diets high in calcium and oxalates and citrates and they can also be seen when there's a prolonged antibiotic use um, as well and that can alter the the normal gut flora so the normal bacteria um, that are present inside the intestines that then interferes with the general and normal absorption of these salts. So that's the first and most common two stones. And next, the next two, we've got something called cysteine and then finally urate. And these are both generally felt to be a result of genetics. Um, so an example of this is male Dalmatians, which are the classic breed to suffer from urate bladder stones, although females and other breeds are also predisposed. So once we then once we know what the stone is, we can then look to identify the underlying cause. So if we take struvite for an example, we know that's normally caused by an infection, but why are we getting this infection? So is the animal diabetic, for example? Are they suffering from a urinary incontinence, which can make cystitis more common? So yeah, we need to look and see if we can identify that underlying cause, which will then help us to, to be able to prevent it. Now, very often we can't actually find an underlying cause and we need to do a few other things. And, and dietary management is definitely something that we need to consider. And that's regardless of stone type. There are different diets that have been shown and proven to reduce the incidence of each stone type. So depending on what type the stones are found to be depends on what the dietary advice will be. There are things that we can just add to normal diets for example as well that may be able to change the pH although that may be a little bit more hit and miss. Um, and then the final big one and general um, recommendation would always be to try and increase the water intake. So a lot of these diets will will do that anyway. They'll increase the, the water intake They'll um, and, and that acts to reduce the concentration of the urine, which helps just flush out the bladder more frequently. So if you can imagine you've got a lot of salts in the urine, if they're very dilute, they're not going to precipitate out um, and form that sludge in the first instance. But if they do, then just producing a lot of really dilute, dilute urine will mean that your pet's going to need to go to the toilet a lot more and they're just going to flush out all of this kind of sand and grit before it develops into big stones. So that's, you know, really important when it comes to prevention.